Dear colleagues, first allow me to thank the conference organizers for inviting me and for this opportunity to participate. Then I am happy to see all of my colleagues uh, from uh, the Asian Pacific Organization for Cancer Prevention. I would like to use this opportunity and to thank Dr. Moore personally for his uh, contribution into the organization and for medical journalism because he steps down as the editor-in-chief. And I would like to use this opportunity to, to congratulate Professor Alizer Masadeh with uh, his new appointment and I hope that it will give a new impetus and we will see the a certain evolution and uh, possibly the geography of uh, our authors uh, will expand. And now to my presentation. Kazakhstan had, has a space of around 3,000 square kilometers uh, and we have uh, 17 million people in population. This is the breakdown of uh, population's demography. It's progressive. It means we have a younger portion in our generation. There are ethnical and geographic parameters into our population. So this is the dynamics uh, for men and women. Figures go up and here we have uh, average growth rates in male and in female. The rate is identical 1.5% percent per annum this is the data for the last 50 uh, for the last 6 years and we also see that uh, over these years the total number of cancer patients goes uh, up from uh, 13.5 thousands to 16000 in uh, males uh, and uh, from 16 to 20000 in uh, females and now the age breakdown in patients. The prevailing group is uh, older patients. And in year 10, it was uh, the age of 70 plus. Uh, by year 2050, we, we see a shift. And there is a big share of uh, aged patients 60 to 69 and uh, elder. The average patient age in 2010 was uh, 61.7 years, and there was a certain trend uh, to elder patients, and in women, and it was at 60 years of age. This is the median age trend. In uh, males, there is a certain tendency for the aging in this figure. In uh, females, it's stable. If you group together sickness rates, morbidities, uh, you would see a peak in the 75-79 group, both for males and females. But when you group it by decades, then uh, high morbidities are characteristic for elder groups. Uh, we, we talk about uh, neoplasms. See, and um, average annual morbidities is 180.7 standardized, standardized, standardized. It is uh, 238.2. And in females, uh, you see the figures. Probably it's due to the uh, age structure in females. And we see the standardized, standardized uh, standards for morbidity, and the average uh, annual growth rate was 2.5 percent. These are um, average indicators, excuse me, age indicators trend. In a group of 40 to 49, 50 to 59, in fem in males, uh, there are certain there is a certain decline, in, uh, uh, while in other population groups it goes up no vice versa the previous slide was for me female and uh, for females and uh, sorry once again the, the previous slide was the general population now for females uh, across all age groups we see trends uh, for growth and uh, especially for groups 30 to 39 40 to 49 and 50 to 59 this is these are the highest great, great rates growth
growth rates. Now, by gender, cancer by gender, uh, the leader is uh, lung cancer, then stomach cancer, and it is interesting that our uh, we also the third position is taken by skin neoplasms. We have this trend in this year as well, and the number of patients grows. For females, uh, the first position is for breast cancer, the second is uh, for skin neoplasm, and the cervical cancer is in the third place. Now, uh, a bit more about um, breast can cancer, because the growth rates are high. Uh, to the left, you see the age breakdown, and um, we see uh, high figures in uh, 60 to 74 years of age. And uh, morbidity goes up across all age groups, except uh, 40 to 49. And I would like to highlight it uh, at my further slides. These are mortality rates for breast cancer. They go down. Uh, uh, the growth is in uh, 50, 50 to 59, and 60 to 64, and in elder groups as well. This is uh, the mean age of uh, breast cancer patients um, in Kazakhstan. There is a trend for aging, and there is no specific uh, growth trend. And uh, the uh, average uh, survival rate also, we see the aging. And dynamics uh, in um, morbidity uh, in breast cancer goes up, uh, usually by 2% in per annum. And uh, the mortality goes down from uh, 16 to 14 cases uh, per 100,000 women in Kazakhstan. Now, the age um, morbidities uh, are high for 60 to 74 years of age, and mortality figures uh, are high in elder groups. And this is the relation between morbidity and mortality. As you see, this figure goes up, um, drives to uh, one in elder groups. These are um, annual average figures uh, for morbidity and mortality uh, to the mor mor morbidity to the left and mortality to the right. 13, 34 per 100,000, that was morbidity, and 15, that was mortality per 100. We also have trends uh, for generation, for uh, generations and uh, for territories in Kazakhstan. The main age of patients was 56.5, and uh, those who died were at, uh, uh, at 60 years of age on average. We have... Uh, um, the five-year five intervals um, and um, morbidity goes up across all groups and especially there uh, there is a, however there is a, um, a reduction in uh, 40 45 uh, 55 59 and uh, mortality goes down across all groups these are again morbidity mortality trends uh, which uh, go up uh, along all regions except uh, Ma Magistan area. And there are indicators uh, for mortality as well as the ratio between morbidity and mortality. Let us focus on the average patient age in um, ethnic groups. In um, Kazakh women, the average age was closer to 50 years. And uh, those who were Russian, Russians, we also studied them, the average age was 60. And this is typical across all Kazakh regions. And here we see the link between uh, the uh, number of births uh, and uh, um, the sickness rate, uh, the morbidity. So there is a certain link in the areas with a high birth rate. Uh, uh, and there are certain differences in regions with low birth rates. And there are high morbidity rates where Kazakh uh, women have a le less uh, weight in the overall population than um, women of Russian ethnicity. 
and we have a spatial assessment identifying levels high, low and average, both for morbidity and mortality. We use standardized uh, indicators and these are color coded regions. Southern uh, regions in Kazakhstan, Almata, Jambul, Zalardin and South Kazakhstan areas are low indicators territories when it comes to morbidity. But Karaganda uh, and Valadar, these are areas with high morbidity levels. A similar trend stays relevant for, for indicators and spatial assessment across uh, Kazakh's territory when it comes to mortality. High indicators are typical for Karaganda, Akmala, Pavladar, and Western Kazakh provinces. And just a little bit fast about the cancer um, health care program, and uh, it was started in 2012. The program will stop this year. You will see the objectives and tasks of the program because we want to increase the expected, uh, expected uh, uh, survivability and the quality of Kazakhstan's uh, uh, oncological patients. We need to improve prevention. This is similar with all other countries by introducing early screening and diagnostics programs to improve uh, high-tech diagnostic methods uh, and to provide treatment based on uh, no, on evidence. But the third pro program is to create their rehabilitation assistance and introduce palliative uh, care for our patients. The, by 2016, we wanted to set up um, a patient centered um, health care in oncology. It, will be it should be available and continuous for all patients. And you can see the breakdown by years how we localized uh, different program elements. In 2011, uh, we have uh, uh, program elements uh, uh, introduced in all um, Kazakh regions uh, for breast cancer, cervical cancer, and colorectal cancer. A Additional program, uh, prostate cancer, was added uh, in um, East Kazakhstan region in 2012. Uh, uh, in 2016, we have screen programs for breast cancer, cervical car cancer, colorectal cancer, prostate cancer, stomach uh, as, uh, as esophagus, and liver cancer across all regions. That's how we ensured available um, accessibility, and it is evident that uh, primary health care is uh, of paramount of uh, primal importance because that's where initial diagnosis happens so that's the base of the triangle Prov provision of uh, specialized care is uh, introduced at the regional level i mean uh, there are 14 regions uh, with regional uh, oncological centers and then in two uh, towns uh, Almata and Astana into cities, we have regional oncological treatment centers. We uh, have a regional high tech, ex, uh, uh, regional high tech um, radiation treatment centers in uh, Almata, Astana, Karaganda, Aktube, and Seme. These are um, five towns. So uh, this is the regional level, but they will be transferred into Kazakh uh, Research Institute on Oncology because uh, the Transplantology Institute is not introduced yet. That's why the flagship in oncology will be um, Kazakh Oncological Institute. These are high-tech diagnostic centers in Kazakhstan with uh, the explanation for their capacity. Uh, there is good equipment in all centers for diagnostics, for treatment. There is a, a nuclear medicine center as well. This is how we improve our, the infrastructure of our oncological service and uh, the assets. In 2012, we, when we planned to launch the program, the budget allocated over $1 billion for the program. But unfortunately, due to the uh, devolving of the national current currency in uh, 
2014 and 2015, so the money has reduced almost twice. And uh, last year, 84 million tenge uh, were allocated for the program, but because of the devaluing, uh, 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 this was not enough. We have certain issues in palliative care. And um, we have a department set with every regional oncological center for palliative care, but um, we must coordinate um, different institutions uh, in the whole uh, segment. Um, and here, I mean, from uh, social minister of social affair, affairs, minister of um, health care, including NGOs and uh, civil society members. A business structures must, must be engaged into the process as well. These are means and ways we want to create the centers for contemporary palliative care. And as I said, by 2016, in all Republican and regional levels for oncological health care, we had such departments. Now about the cancer register. It existed, uh, it always existed in Kazakhstan. But when it comes to the population level, it was difficult. Uh, the work is done uh, by the Republican Center for e healthcare. And there is an e register for oncological patients. And they collect data not only on uh, registering cancers, but also uh, on their treatment. Thank you. Enough. Do we have any questions from the floor? Any comments? No? Well, I know um, Dr. Igishinov's uh, research fairly well since I've been involved in his program in, in Kazakhstan. Um, and uh, the, um, the data for the cancer registry data seem to be very good. And also the, the belief is that the cancer screening programs are working very well, but unfortunately, the number of publications the, um, and the validation um, still needs to be, um, deserves more emphasis, let's say. So how do you see that the, the situation was develop, will develop in terms of the, the screening program? You see you have uh, nationwide screening programs for many cancers. Um, do they have uh, good data for the reduction in mortality, for example? Thank you for your question. The question is quite difficult because I don't represent a state body. I represent a non-governmental organization, a public organization. That's why I would uh, like to share the data about measures taken in the sphere of oncology. They are topical issues and of course the world society should know the results of our activity, which is especially important in the long term run. Of course you understand that there are certain challenges and difficulties in developing methods. And here I would like to thank Mr. Belayev. Thank you, Professor. And I think that uh, um, this uh, area, the new methods of research uh, will develop. We will have to create uh, a new vision of the scientists uh, and uh, perhaps uh, we have to make them understand that they have to publish. As far as motivation is concerned, our education system undergoes changes. We have uh, a new system of uh, scientific grade protection because you are an academic supervisor of our graduates who are going to present this thesis and you know that publications are required in all science um, active spheres. I'd like to stress is that the, the fact that Certainly, when we consider the networking that we will go on to later on in this session, it is very important that you have good contacts with uh, not only your colleagues in Kazakhstan in different cities, but also in Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. And that in the future, you hope to uh, that the those countries at the present time are not providing uh, sufficient accurate data, and hopefully that by working together in the future, that this may be possible. Yeah? Just a comment. Yes, I would like to comment. I totally agree with you. 
I think that uh, publications from Central Asia, uh, there are not, mu not many of them. We are trying to collaborate with uh, Asian countries, uh, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan is only one of the countries in this region. We have a lot of ideas. You know it well. Last year, the idea was to make a Eurasian Institute of uh, Cancer Research, but there were a lot of legal aspects related to it. We plan to open it in uh, the Republic of Kyrgyzstan. It's the only republic which uh, allows uh, foreign um, countries to participate in non-governmental organizations. We have already started this work, and we will invite not only Central Asian countries, but the whole Asian Pacific region, and we hope that the um, friends from this region will support us in this regard.